Cool. Awesome. Um, hi, Shadrach. Um, let's see. Can you hear me? Um, so hi, everyone. Um, let's see if we could get Shadrach on board. Okay. Um, just one sec. Cool. Hey, man. Hey, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Can. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Sorry, my oh. I don't know what happened. It's fine. It's fine. Cool. So, um, Shadrach, uh, the floor is yours. Yeah, feel free to. Okay. Sure thing. Sure thing. Sure thing. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. okay, okay. Yeah. So, um, hi everybody. My name is Shedra Kakintayo. I'm a developer advocate at the Cloud Foundry Foundation. And today, I'm basically going to talk about painless Kubernetes with Cloud Foundry. So, I mean, um, this talk is basically me trying to um, talk about the Cloud Foundry project, which is an open source project, and how it leverages Kubernetes, where it, how it abstracts over Kubernetes to make um, life easier for developers that want to like have their stuff or have their projects deployed on Kubernetes. So um, a little bit about me is, like I said, I'm a developer advocate at the Cloud Foundry Foundation. I'm also a technical writer. I write for, I've written for um, blogs like Smashing Magazine, LogRocket, um, OpenSource.com, even Container Journal. So I'm a very big fan of technical writing. I'm always open to share my knowledge with um, the community. I'm also an open source advocate, so I try my best to talk about open source um, software generally in various parts of um, the world, generally. Um, so let's just get started. I'm not, I'm not about to waste anybody's time, and I want to make sure that um, we have time for questions and um, there's time for um, everybody to really share their thoughts on the presentation generally. Um, so Cloud Foundry, whenever you think Cloud Foundry, basically, um, Cloud Foundry is an open source platform that allows applications, um, application development teams to build, test, and deploy um, and scale applications. So uh, to make this even simpler, if you're thinking Cloud Foundry, you probably should think um, Heroku, but open source generally. Um, Cloud Foundry um, was the idea of Cloud Foundry basically came about when Heroku came out and the people wanted to, the, um, the VMware generally wanted to make sure that there is um, a um, open source version of, um, of Heroku. That is how Cloud Foundry came about generally. Now, Cloud Foundry has been leveraging on Kubernetes for a while now, and um, it's just really, I'm just really excited to talk about how Cloud Foundry leverages Kubernetes and abstracts over it to um, you know, make um, deployments to Kubernetes even much more friendlier than what we are currently used to. So um, basically, the, the most the selling point of Cloud Foundry generally, I wouldn't use selling point because, sorry for that, because it's an open source project. But what um, the most interesting part of Cloud Foundry and what it really brings to your developer experience is um, how you deploy your application uh, with just a single command. So all you need to do is just to do a CF push and um, in the um, root folder of your application and it gets deployed to a Cloud Foundry cluster on any infrastructure of your choice. So it makes you, it gives you the flexibility of running um, your um, your own um, infrastructure and having um, running Kubernetes on your own infrastructure and having um, um, the awesome developer experience that comes with um, Cloud Foundry. Now, next is code to Kubernetes in one command. Now, Cloud Foundry has, has, has now evolved over a couple of years. Cloud Foundry has been existing for a while, but um, as of last year, Cloud Foundry evolved to allow developers um, leverage Kubernetes, Kubernetes that, developers that want to really, really have the flexibility that Cloud Foundry provides in general on Kubernetes. So we still have the same experience that comes to, that Cloud Foundry originally have, to, but this time for the for Kubernetes. So the same CF push you use for just deploying to Cloud Foundry generally, you can also do the same for Kubernetes, which is the Cloud Foundry for Kubernetes project. I will talk about that um, ahead in the presentation. Um, so, like I said, um, Cloud Foundry is just like Heroku, but it's on your own infrastructure. So you can install Cloud Foundry on your infrastructure and manage it by yourself. And um, it could be on AWS, it could be on Google Cloud, it could be on wherever you really want to um, host your um, um, Cloud Foundry. It's basically on your infrastructure. So think about the possibilities and the flexibilities that it gives you. And um, when it comes to scaling, it also provides um, that 
very easy support for you to scale your application or for your users with basically a single command cf scale so the whole concept of cloudfront is making developers or devops and devops engineering teams even um have sort of a very very easy way to get their application from testing to deployment generally so it's one of the like the um, awesome part of cloudfront that i'm going to be talking about now the next is supports all languages and frameworks so irrespective of whatever type of way you build your application, whatever language you use to build your application, Cloudfront it produces, um, gives developers, um, teams generally the um, support for most of these languages. It could be Java, it could be JavaScript, it could be Ruby, so Python, depending on whatever um, team your whatever um, um, whatever language that your team is using, Cloudfront has support for that, and it's always very very um, easy for you to deploy um, your applications to Kubernetes. Now let's talk about the Cloud Foundry for Kubernetes project. So this is um, this is basically an abstract bringing the Cloud Foundry um, original Cloud Foundry developer experience to Kubernetes. I know like a bunch of us um, have um, have faced a, bunch, a various number of issues when we are trying to get started with Kubernetes, trying to learn Kubernetes generally. So Cloud Foundry as an open source project, um, the team came together to like, okay, why don't we bring the, uh, the CF push experience that already exists in Cloud Foundry to Kubernetes? Make um, I mean, this is two open source projects coming together to like work as one, which is always very, very inside, um, uh, exciting. Now, let's see how the CFO Kids project um, can really, really uh, make this um, life easier for us, right? Um, so um, let's let's Jim, just give you a quick run through of how the components of a cloud application with CF looks like. Now, um, from your phone, from your browser, wherever it is, it is it is pushed to Cloud Foundry to any infrastructure that Cloud Foundry has been installed on. Through the CF API, so um, CF API basically connects, um, gives you a, a mode, mode means of interaction between um, your cluster and you or the um, receiving end. So from there, you can also connect when you deploy to your infrastructure. You can also connect the database, uh, which is also known as a service in Cloud Foundry. Uh, we have like Cloud Foundry has support for various um, database uh, depending on your broker, uh, from Postgres to MySQL to MongoDB. Basically, uh, most of the um, the popular um, database services are actually available on Cloud Foundry. So this is how um, it is really structured. It's a very simple, sim it's a very, very, has a very, very simple architecture generally for you for you to easily deploy your applications um, and on Kubernetes. Now, the next thing is, like I said, it supports all language and frameworks, even on Kubernetes. So, I mean, um, if you have, if you are a kind of person that wants to like, I don't know, um, deploy a something like a Gatsby um, application on Cloud Foundry or a strappy application on Cloud on um, Kubernetes. Sorry, um, Cloud Foundry for Kubernetes actually gives you that power to be able to do um, use those hipster JavaScript frameworks that maybe your front end is built with and deployed on Kubernetes. So you don't necessarily have to be um, um, a, a a very full a large application. But if you for let's say you want to try out or you want to learn or how to you know deploy stuff to Kubernetes uh, with all these hipster JavaScript framework. Um, Crowdfunding for kids, um, Crowdfunding for Kubernetes generally allows you to do that and um, irrespective of the kind of language or frameworks you are using. Now, how does the whole process happen? How um, does it really, really work um, in layman terms? So it's, it, the whole process is actually about four stages, right? When you, when you are on your, on, on your terminal or wherever you choose to um, make a command, when you run the CF push command, where the um, Crowdfunding CLI is installed, it's basically what we um it has a build trigger so when it when this build has been triggered um it uses what we call build packs which provides an, a runtime environment for your application i'll talk about build packs um after this slide a little bit so we basically use build packs build that pack basically gives your application irrespective of um what type of application you use it gives your application its place to run generally with a series of steps that already been specified for each um, build pack for each build pack that, that is very specific to your language. So if your application is a Node.js um, application, whenever a build is pushed, the, uh, the build triggers actually help detect the type of build pack that has been, the kind of application that has been built and assign it to a to its respective build pack. So now that build pack could provide some stuff like NPM, could provide stuff like Yarn, depending on what your application really uses. Then whenever the build pack is really um, has finished its job of allowing your application, uh, installing your application, and installing the various dependencies needed for your application to run, then a release happens, and this release is generally created into an image. 
So a, 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 an image of your application is then deployed to Kubernetes on wherever, on, um, um, where, on whatever, whatever infrastructure your application has been, um, you've basically installed Cloud Foundry for Kubernetes on. So it basically takes your, your, the image of your application and then deploys to Kubernetes um, as with just a single command. So you do need to worry about the stress of doing those configurations yourself. You, you really, really do not need to write Yahoo for most of the time, except you have very specific configurations that you need to do, but you really do not need to have um, um, to write YAML to be able to deploy your application to Kubernetes with Cloud Foundry. All you just need to do is to do a CF push and um, leave the rest to the build pack and um, now let's talk about build packs. The history of build packs. So build packs, the first, the first place we basically this cloud native board heard about build pack was on Heroku. I mean Heroku really did a lot of like Heroku really um brought that change when it comes to um cloud native community. It brought what we call build pack. Now the first version of build pack was created by um, Heroku, which is um which was then taken, which was then taken by VMware, uh, by, basically by P Pivotal. Sorry. And um, they made their own version of um, the build pack, which is what Cloud Foundry, the first version of Cloud Foundry, was using. And um, then Heroku also created another version of a build pack, maybe trying to um, increase their range and also trying to make build packs even better. Then the cloud native community came together and said, "Okay, why do we have two, um, two, let's say, two different entities trying to specify what kind of build pack is created and what not is created?" Then which basically what now came about was the cloud native build packs. Now, this is a specification that other people, other open source projects, other companies can basically use to create their um, build packs. So Pivotal and Heroku came together to form the cloud native build pack. Uh, and you basically use the cloud and you use the special of the cloud build pack, which I'm going to talk about after this slide. So that's how um, build pack really came into um, existence. Now, CF push now when on Cloud Foundry for Kubernetes on basically when you do a CF push, the app source is taken um, through a phase through a phase with Packeto build packs. Now Packeto build packs is a specification of the Cloud Native build pack. Like I said, it's um, built by it's a project that we offered to um, the Cloud Foundry Foundation um, by VMware and um, it's currently being maintained by the Cloud Foundry community. So this basically this um, package build pack is basically an abstraction over the cloud native build pack. It uses the cloud native build pack specification. So anybody can take out of the cloud native build pack specification and make a version of their own build pack because this is like the standard. So a spec has been created and what um, VMware did with package to build pack is to create a specification for it for the cloud foundry project. Now, package build pack makes it very, very easy for you to deploy whatever type of your application, whatever type of application you want to deploy on Kubernetes, basically. So it does the uh, recognizing of your application. You don't need to tell it that, okay, this application is a node. It searches, it scans through your application folder and searches for very specific things. Now, for a project like a JavaScript project, for example, when you push, when you do a CF push, Package build pack goes through the process of scanning, searching for a package or JSON, JSON, a node modules folder, or a package log or JSON, which is very, very specific to the JavaScript community. And also for other languages, it searches for various um, very specific files to understand that, okay, this um, language, this particular project is just for um, a, this is a Python project, this is a Node.js project, and assigns it to the specific, um, to the, uh, specified build pack phase to check going through on time installing the dependencies the needed dependencies for that application to run then also at the end of the day everything becomes an image which is then uploaded deployed on Kubernetes so it's still a containerization process happens then the result of the containerization process which is an image is then deployed to Kubernetes so you really do not need to worry about um you don't need to worry about stressing yourself of going through this process yourself um with build packs uh with the Packeto build packs, build packs generally, they help you in dictating your application language and then specify a list of commands that are needed for the application to run. So let's go over the process again to make it even much more easier. So you, you have your app source. When you do a CF push to a cluster that has been, um, that has a Kubernetes cluster that has been um, created for, for you with Cloud Foundry for Kubernetes, 
it's then converts your app to an image and it's then deployed to, um, to Kubernetes. That's how simple it is with just a single command, which CF push, push. That's the developer experience Cloudfront really, really brings to Kubernetes and um, makes it more even easier for um, developers to leverage the power of Kubernetes in an easier way. For example, um, before, let me just give you a personal experience. For example, before I even got into the cloud native space, I did not know anything about Kubernetes. Even till now, I'm still struggling with Kubernetes. Um, but um, understanding how um, the cloud, um, cloud front for Kubernetes really works made me really, really deploy applications on Kubernetes without having so much of the technical know-how. So that's the experience, that's the developer experience that Cloudfront really, really brings to Kubernetes. Um, for Kubernetes is a really, really, uh, Really, really great solution for deploying for basically um, having an infrastructure. Kubernetes. So a lot of teams is always advanced application that I want to scale to so always deploy to Kubernetes. Really, really um, interesting. Now, that's when they basically just brought the CF experience, the existing original platform experience, to um, Kubernetes, and then make it easier for developers to just. Um, plug and play. So just install the Cloudfront and say like install Cloudfront for Kubernetes on any um cluster on any infrastructure of your choice. I personally enjoy using Google um, Kubernetes um engine. So install on any of those and you are good to go. So just log in and you're good to go. That's how the whole Cloudfront process works. Now, for example, now let's this is a very simple process. Now you imagine you have a Node.js application that you want to deploy to Kubernetes and let's how the Cloudfront makes that process even easier for you. When you do a CF push, when the SAF push and your project uses so the bit pack has um, detected that hey, this Node.js application, this steps I just happened. Now it looks for a node a node modules folder. If there's no node modules folder, it looks for a package of JSON folder. Now when this package a package of JSON file, now it runs an npm install which will um, automatically create a node modules folder and install all the dependencies that is needed for your application to actually work. Right. Um, you of course it uses the node runtime. Then um, from there, when all these processes has been done, when all the required dependencies for um, the application based on what is in the package JSON file, it then containerizes the entire um, application and, and creates an image. Now this image is just basically what is going to be deployed to Kubernetes. You do not really need to worry about how this how this whole process really really happens. All you just need to do is to push your Node.js application and you are good to go. This is what happens underneath and um, you really, really do not need to worry about it. All thanks to um, build packs, the cloud needs to build that and packet to build packs and, um, and stuff running for Kubernetes. Now, so now just, not just application code, but dev tools as well. So Cloudfront is basically makes it really, really um, easy for you to add um, other development tools to your whole process of deployment to Kubernetes. So I mean, a lot of us, I mean, we use Kubernetes as an infrastructure, but we need to, we like to always plug extra things to it and um, to the entire and the existing workflow. So things like GitHub Actions, CircleCI, Travis, for monitoring um, Grafana, Prometheus, you can really, really add these things to your existing workflow and to your existing deployment to Kubernetes workflow. I mean, for much more things like um, track uh, monitoring and um, CICD. So um, a lot of Modern software development development teams really really likes to include include these things in their entire process, which is really really exciting. Now, Cloudfront brings that experience to Kubernetes and also allows you to plug in all these things wherever you want and as easy as possible. Now, how do you really get started with this with um, Cloudfront for Kubernetes? It's really really easy. You can check out the tutorials on CF um, website on the Cloudfront website. Um, you always assume that you already have sort of like an existing knowledge of Kubernetes of how um, containerization works, and then um, um, we have a medium page where we do a lot of experiments with various or other open source projects and um, frameworks. Then you can also check the YouTube if you are more of a visual person on how um, Cloudfront or Kubernetes really, really makes your existing deployments to Kubernetes even easier. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. And we also have the Cloudfront Summit coming up very soon, which is also part of the Linux Foundation. and. Um, you can easily go to this link and register if you want to know exactly how Cloudfront for Kubernetes really, really, um, if you want to see exciting talks on from people that have used Cloudfront for, for Kubernetes and want to share their experience with it, um, you can always go, um, um, this happen, This is happening in June, I think you can uh, register and join the event, which is um, really, really going to be an exciting um, DevOps related event. So if you are really a big fan of DevOps too, you can also, um, I mean, most of us, I mean, you cannot be here if you're not, if you're not uh, a fan of DevOps, you cannot be here. So, uh, but 
then yeah so if you are a fan of devops and kubernetes then you can always come to the cf summit and um so yeah that's pretty much uh it. this is um how you can really really have a pinless kubernetes deployment um solution to um what is currently to your existing infrastructure so um if you want to reach out to me you can always reach out to me at put down underscore block black on twitter if you want to have like specific questions you need to ask personally instead of like on here i don't know but i'll advise you to ask all the questions you have on here then um, at Cloud Foundry, of course, on Twitter. Then if you want to join the Cloud Foundry community and really connect with other people that are using Cloud Foundry for Kubernetes, then it's Slack or Cloud Foundry for .org. So yeah, that's pretty much um, it. Um, thank you so much for um, being here. And I hope I did not bore you. I hope I you know, um, talk too much. So yeah, that's pretty much um, it. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming to this particular um, presentation. And um, yeah. Looking forward to hearing the question. So is there any question that I should answer? Hello. If you have any questions, just easily, just quickly drop it in um, the chat section, and I would do well to answer it. So I do not see any question currently. Hi, Uche. Sorry, could you come on? Do you have any specific question for me? Okay. Oops. Okay. okay, so Uche is having the call, he's unmuting himself and coming on the call. I think we should be for him see if. Okay. okay, I think there's a little bit of technical difficulties and I'm sort of left alone. <laughs> yeah, so, so I think someone asks, how do you want to connect with your social media? Yeah, so you can reach out to me at CUDA underscore BLBCK on Twitter or just drop it down. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Namdi asked when I deploy to, um, hold on. Um, Namdi asked when I deploy to Cloud Foundry. Sorry, I need to. Um, when I deploy to Cloud Foundry, do I have full access to the infrastructure? Yes, you do have 
access to infrastructure. Yes, every single thing you really need to do, um, you have access to the infrastructure. Yes, you do. Um, essentially, I want to know if Cloud Foundry is like a pass for Kubernetes. Yes and no, but generally, um, okay, I would say yes. So Cloud Foundry being so, um, I, I saw a tweet where someone said, um, you do not need Kubernetes, you need a pass. Cloud Foundry basically brings both experience. It brings it brings a pass experience and also bring, gives you access to Kubernetes. For, so it's generally a pass for Kubernetes. So I agree with you that it brings, it's a um, platform as a service for Kubernetes. It's basically an attraction over Kubernetes. So it's a pass for Kubernetes. Um, hi, Abubakar. I think Uchi is having issues coming on. If you have any more questions, please do let me know. Cool. Um, yeah, um, sorry for the inconveniences or the inconsistencies. Uh, actually, I, I just... Um, yeah, yeah, short and short. And. Yeah, so yeah, uh, thanks a lot, uh, Shadrach. Um, I, I think your session was really, really insightful. Um, and I, I know that was also the case for the attendees as well. Um, please feel free to drop your questions on the chat sections. Uh, I know for sure Shadra could be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, yeah, we still have a lot of time left. Uh, I mean, like 15 minutes, 16 minutes plus. Um, but yeah, um, I'm just going through the YouTube live to see if we have any questions on YouTube. Um, no, I don't know. Uh, okay. Cool. Uh, so thanks a lot, Shadrach. Um, um, if, if, uh, of course, I, I, I know if you are in Nigeria or if you are an African, you should know who Shadrach is. Uh, <laughs> please, if you don't know, if you don't, if you don't know him, please feel free to reach, uh, follow him on Twitter. You know, I, I think he just. Uh, you just share this Twitter handle as well on the chats. Uh, follow Coda Black on Twitter you know, to get information on anything, basically. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Um, this is really, yeah. really um, a very, very good um, initiative. Um, thank you, the CNCF, for doing this for Africa. Um, thank you, Albaka, for you know um, anchoring this. Thank you, Uche, for being my co presenter, I guess. Um, <laughs> thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you, everybody, for um, coming on for this um, thing. This is really, really exciting to see Africa embrace the cloud native space and also DevOps. It's really, really interesting and very, very exciting. And we only have the sky is really our limit, I guess. It's the only limit we have. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, thank you, everybody. Bye and cool. stay safe. <laughs>